got a special guest today. I'm really excited that he is able to join the show. Um, I've been a fan of his work for such a long time. CP, Casey Powell, the franchise, joining us from Knicks Fans TV. CP, what's up, bro? How you doing, man? Dexter, Dexter, good morning, man. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, man. One of the things I got to tell you that I love, man, is you, your background is dope. I love it. I love the background. Appreciate it. I love the the posters, the Knicks memorabilia. I had the Starks poster right you got in the back on my wall growing up, you know, as a kid in East Flatbush, Brooklyn, rooting for the Knicks. So I appreciate it, bro. Really appreciate you coming on here. Look, got a lot of Knicks fans that watch this show, a lot of Knicks fans that follow, that are passionate about the Knicks. You know this because you started Knicks Fan TV. So I wanted to kick this off by talking to you about how you started Knicks Fan TV, why you started it, and what that connection with the fans has been for you. Yeah, so uh, at, at, like you, a diehard Knicks fan, uh, born in Flatbush, uh, Brookdale hey. Hospital, you know what I'm saying? Me you, too, you used, to, all right. you used to go to the junction and go get the new kicks, you know, all wrapped up in the plastic. And yes, then, sir. you know, go to the bakery, maybe a little Roy Rogers for lunch. So definitely <laughs> uh, had the Brooklyn experience as a youth. So I, I can share that with you. But, you know, the, the reason I started Knicks Fan TV was to really give the fans more of a voice on the team and more coverage of the team that was uh, that wasn't present, whether it was mainstream media or the local media outlets. You know, I always say uh, I grew up as as a Mike and the Mad Dog kid. Used to listen to them banter back and forth, and that really started. You know, that really was the basis of, of my passion for New York sports. And I, I just knew that you know we needed something for the digital age, something that fans, not just New Yorkers, but transplants, people that have moved away, people that have gone down the beltway, whether it was uh, D.C., North Carolina, Miami. We even have fans all over the world that, you know, want us to speak more on their team that just may not have that opportunity wherever they are. At the same time, you know, the team has gone through some some tough years, you know, to say the least over the last 20 years. So mainstream media and the local outlets, they, they don't really have the time or the interest to cover the team as uh, as in depth as I wanted to, so I figured that there was a white space there. Uh, I capitalized on it, and and the first day at Knicks Fan TV, uh, I went out to the garden with just my cell phone and a tripod and just started interviewing fans. During that was during the NBA draft, 2017, when we drafted Frank Nilakina. There was also rumors that Kristaps Porzingis was going to be traded. So there was a lot to talk about, a lot of buzz around uh, around New York City and Madison Square Garden. And yeah, I, I just I captured the sentiments, threw it up on YouTube. But ultimately, the content has evolved into, you know, the postgame show. Our flagship show is, is postgame live. Uh, we take fan phone calls. We take opinions on social media. And, and it's been growing steadily ever since. Yeah, and I've been happy for that growth and that success, man, to see that as a co fellow content creator myself. And also, people should know you've been featured on ESPN. You're, you do stuff on SNY with my SNY guys, well, Chris, yeah. Chris Williamson and Ian Begley. My boy's there. You do stuff there and doing a great job. But i got to ask you this, too. As a fellow content creator, uh, yeah. CP, you know that there's challenges in creating content. And you said you started from being out in the street, outside the garden, cell phone, tripod, getting it done. And now it's evolved into what it is. What were some of the challenges you faced in content creation for Knicks fan TV and getting it to where it is now? Well, the biggest challenge to me was, you know, determining whether or not there, there was a fit for it, determine whether or not your voice was actually going to be appreciated or your platform was going to be appreciated. And when you're first starting out, you're not going to know because you might have one viewer, two viewers, you might have no viewers some days, but with consistency, you continue to learn. And, and as you learn, you, you iterate. And, you know, as you mentioned, my background, it wasn't always like this. I started out with one poster and you, no right. posters. And over time, you, you just build up and, and you continue to iterate. So uh, the, the biggest challenge was, was, was really proving that, that there was a place for this and there was a fit for it. But um, the fan base has taken to it, man. And, and I've been appreciative ever since. So one of the things you talked about is you talked about doing this and starting this during the sort of lean years of the Knicks where, you know, things weren't so great. But last year was a really big season for the Knicks. And I don't know about you. I don't think many of us saw it coming in the way that it was. But, you know, the 2021 season was so huge. Did you see that impact also translate to what you do on Knicks fans TV, increased viewership, increased fan engagement? Did that help you guys as well, too? No doubt about it. And another challenge is... As I said, we we do these post game shows after every game. Now, one of the seasons was a seventeen win season, 
So <laughs> you do the math. There was a hell of a lot of losses in between that. And, and it's every night we're going live. We're taking the sentiments of the fan base. And, and it's like a funeral every night. It's doom and gloom. It's we're going nowhere fast. But people are still into it. And, and they, they, they would call in and, and want to be heard. And, you know, um, the KD situation, the whole KD Kyrie hype train with Zion, you know, I thought that was really going to lift this thing up exponentially. And even when we didn't get them, the fan base was still coming. The numbers were still climbing. The subscriber growth was still there going through the pandemic. Uh, another challenge because there was no content, you know, the season had ended abruptly in, in February. And so we had to scramble and figure out what we were going to do to get us through all the way to the next season. We ended up going nine months without basketball. So thankfully we were able to get uh player, former players to come in and, and do storytelling. And, and that was really a hit for us. And then, as you said, hiring Thibodeau going into last mm -hmm. season where Vegas had us penciled in at about you know, 20 something 20 wins, wins. About 20 yeah, wins, 20 yeah. wins. Mm -hmm. me, myself, I had us in there at about 26 wins. I wasn't expecting much. But, you know, Thibodeau, Julius, RJ, they took us all by surprise. And with that ride, Knicks Fan TV continued to grow. And, and as you said, uh, I got the opportunity to, to take on Max Kellerman. We, we shot the fair one on, on his show. And when I thought it was just going to be one show, it turned into a whole series that took me into the end of the NBA season through the finals and all. So it's just been a great opportunity. But certainly uh, the Knicks turning it around uh, certainly helped us. Yeah, bless, blessings on that, bro. And I have to ask you, because when you look at, you know, everything that you guys have done, and you've you've had the, the post-game show, you've been doing all this content, you've had some really good guests. Was there a great guest or interview that you loved for having with yeah. Knicks Fans TV? Is there one that really stands out for you? There's there's a few, man. I got to say, I have to say uh, Rasheed Wallace was definitely one, because, you know, Sheed was never really a media guy. Yeah, so him accepting and accepting, you know, our request and coming on to me, that meant a lot because he was one of my favorite players. But number two, the fact that he trusted an upstart platform, you know, and we didn't give I didn't send him any questions, anything ahead of time. He just came on and, and he gave us everything. He gave us an hour of his time. It was very candid. We got a lot of sound bites, a lot of quotables from that. So that meant a lot to me. And, and on top of that, he spoke about how much he wanted to play for the Knicks. You know, something that the fans didn't really know. A lot of fans see that he came during the Knicks tape year in 2012. But there was a time right before he went to the Pistons that he wanted to try to get to the Knicks. And Isaiah was trying to get him to the Knicks. And it just didn't work out that way. So Sheed was one. I have to say Derek Harper is, is another one. You know, Harper, yeah. one of my favorite Knicks of all time. I did meet him at, at the Garden many moons ago. And, and we talked about him coming on the show. It took a year for, for him to get on, but I stayed with it. And again, he gave me an hour of his time, was very candid and, and uh, you know, gave me a lot of compliments on the platform as well. So that one meant a lot. And then uh, just recently, John Starks. Ah, my John man. That was my, that was my guy. That was my guy, CP. Yeah. That was my guy. Yeah. 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 So I, I got to shout out the Dick Barnett Foundation. I was able to uh, to interview John Starks uh, last month or so. And, and that was good. And then Spike. Yeah, yep. Spike. Also through the Dick Barnett Foundation, we were able to interview Spike at uh, at Clyde's Wine and Dine. So the, yeah, those those are the I would say the top four uh, on the list. Nice. Oh, that, that's a good four, man. That's definitely that's a good four. four. Yeah. All right. Appreciate you talking about Knicks Fan TV. We love everything you're doing there. Let's get into some Knicks basketball. Sure. Okay. You guys do the post game show. I'm always checking in on that. What is the pulse of Knicks fans right now? Because we know the play last couple of games has been a little <laughs> bit shaky. What's the vibe you're getting from Knicks fans right now? Well, the vibes in the beginning was a shout out my guy, JD Sports Talk. It was all about the 50 burger, man. We have yep. fans jumping in. They, they were uh, uh, optimistic that this team was going to win 50 games, even 60 games at some point. But, you know, they, they are seven and four. But this just, is, just goes to show you the difference between this year and last year. Last year, this team is seven and four. You're saying, hey. <laughs> this is this is great right now right. this expectations the expectations are through the roof and now you're looking at them losing a couple games here getting blown out here and you're like well is this a team that can get past the first round can they beat the hawks the doubt starts to set in the 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 patience starts to wear thin so i think i think the optimism is still there but 
there, there is a, some some Debbie Downer, some Doomers and Gloomers that's calling and saying, hey, I, I told you this team was fool's gold and we should be tanking and stuff like that. You, you're hearing those people here and there. But listen, overall, I, I think the Knicks are in, a, are in a good position. They have been struggling and, and they just need to find their groove right now. Still early through through 11 games. Yeah, so actually 12 games, 75. I yeah, think we're 75. Trying, we're 75. trying to forget about that loss because they came back the other night and couldn't close it. But I, yeah. I get it. I, I, I get that. Do you think it sounds to me that you don't think there's any cause for concern. I know there's been some cause with the starting unit not playing good. They didn't play good the other night. Tibbs stuck with the bench a lot in that game against Milwaukee. We've seen some shaky play. Fournier hasn't looked great. Kemba yeah. hasn't looked great in recent games. Is there cause for real concern about those things? Or are you saying, like, look, we saw some good things from them when they had the 5-1 and one start. Let's stick the course. Oh, there's definitely concern. I'll give you three. As you mentioned, uh, number one is defense. The defense right now, this team finished third in the league in defense. They they were number one across many statistical categories last year. Uh, right now, they're, they're the fifth worst defense in the league. Uh, right now, they're just not crashing out on, onto the three-point shooters. Um, Fournier, Kemba, I don't think th- those guys are, are solid on-ball defenders. And once the, the, the perimeter breaks down, once your perimeter coverage breaks down, it puts a lot of strain on your team defense, and they're just not connected there. Last year, they were very much in lockstep with each other. The communication was on point. Their rotations were crisp. You know, a lot of that had to do with the presence of Alfred Payton and Reggie Bullock. Some fans don't want to give him credit for that, but I think I have to based on what I'm seeing right now. So they've got to tighten that up offensively there is just it's inconsistent in terms of the chemistry and the flow and I expected that I expected that more more so than the severe defensive regression because it's going to take some time to for Kemba Walker in, in particular to figure out his balance in the lineup he and Julius Randle have to gain some chemistry Kemba's got to figure out okay how often am I just going to dump it down to Julius and and when do I myself put some pressure on the defense so that I can play make for the rest of the guys on this unit, because we're missing a consistent playmaker in that unit. So those are those two things concern me. And then thirdly is the durability of our bigs. You know, mm-hmm. Nerlens Noel already came into the season banged up. He's out again. Mitch Robinson, my guy to block Ness monster. He's dealing with the hip flexor, you know, Todd Gibson. That's my guy, solid veteran Brooklyn stand up. He's doing his thing. But the durability of our bigs is, is certainly uh, uh, going to hurt our defense because, again, when things break down in the perimeter, you need to rely on your rim protection as well. And, you know, we, we just don't know if we can count on those guys on a nightly basis. I'm going to ask this kind of tongue-in-cheek, CP. Do the Knicks miss Alfred Payton at all? Oh, man. I don't. <laughs> that's, that's tough. That's tough. I know. I know it's tough. <laughs> I don't. I don't. But I'll, I'll tell you what. The fans what, don't. The fans don't. No, we know fans the fans certainly don't. do we not. And, yeah. and they, and they don't, you know, his mom was chirping after the, the loss of the Hawks when they when he started uh, Derrick Rose. I wasn't feeling that at all. But mm-hmm. look, from, I'll tell you what Tom Thibodeau liked about Peyton. He, number one, he liked that. Peyton did put pressure on the rim. That's one thing he could do very well last year was that he could get to the rim at ease. He just couldn't finish well. So <laughs> defenses really weren't, weren't respecting those drives. But, you know, he, he was still able to make things happen there. On the other side of the ball, what Tibbs did like about him was that uh, he was switchable. He was a big 6'4 guard. You know, uh, phys- he, he could play physical. He could play big. And with Kemba, you, you're not necessarily getting that. You know, Peyton wasn't necessarily a lockdown defender, but he's a way better f- defender t- for me on ball than Kemba Walker was. So there are some trade-offs there. There's certainly some trade-offs there, but uh, I don't miss him. Uh, the star lineup, they've been getting smoked. Uh, I, ta- yeah. I talked about that. I know you talked about the three concerns. Is that a big concern of yours with the yeah. starting lineup? And do you see Thibs making any adjustments? Maybe not now, but maybe 10 games down the yeah. road. If we still see this continue for the Knicks, do you see any changes to the starting lineup? One of the worst starting lineups in the league right now, Dexter. They've been outscored by 64 points in 205 minutes. That is a league worst. The starting five is concerning. Uh, the energy overall is concerning. Again, Kemba, we, I'm still going to give him some time, but we just don't know from game to game what he's going to give us. To me, he's a bit too passive. You know, he's settling by just dumping it down to Julius and then forcing Julius now, the pressure's on Julius to become more of a playmaker for the rest of the lineup. You know, Kemba has to be able to knock down shots because if he's not knocking down shots and he's not playing defense too well, he's a negative on both ends of the floor. He has to be more of our engine. Evan Forney, another guy. Listen, he's he he was our big free agent ticket, 
And there's some games where he's just not being aggressive enough. He's got to step up. He's passing up on shots. You know, he's not drive attacking the rim as, as much as he should. And so those guys have got to help Julius Randle from himself, because if not, you're going to be settling for a lot of isolation, a lot of holding the ball, a lot, a lot of stagnation on the offensive side of things. And that's just not going to help us. So the, the starting lineup is definitely a concern. Tibbs did say in his press conference yesterday that he's not necessarily looking for changes. I don't see him making major changes. You you may see um, some rotational minutes change uh, one way or the other, and you'll you'll likely see guys like Derrick Rose or Emmanuel quickly closing games more if Kemba Walker doesn't have it. But I don't see any immediate changes to the starting lineup just yet. I was going to ask you more about Kemba Walker, but I think you've, you've belabored on him and his struggles enough there. Who has impressed you on this team thus far this season? We've seen Obi look more comfortable than he has last year, Obi Toppin, that is. We've seen Emmanuel quickly come on as of late. But who's really impressed you this season with the way they played where you're like, I like what's going on here? Well, so considering the, the the rotations are pretty much the same, you know, you're just swapping out Kemba and Fournier for, for Peyton and Bullock. I got to go with, with Obi. I have to go with Obi because the energy that he's bringing to this second unit and the confidence that he's bringing to this sec- in his second year is light and day from his rookie year. You could tell that the absence of a training camp, the absence of a summer league really impacted him last year. He was much more of a deer in the headlights for a good portion of his rookie season. Did come on strong in the playoffs against the Hawks, but now you're seeing Obi making quick decisions. He's making a quick first step. Uh, off the pick and roll. He's making a quick attack to the basket, finishing 84% at the rim, which is great. Every time they get the rebound, it's Obi running. He's out in transition. He's out on the leak outs. A lot of times IQ and Rose are finding him for those alley-oops. So to me, it, it's the energy, it's the confidence and uh, with that that Obi Top is bringing to me has been the most impressive. Definitely want to see his three-point shot come along. It hasn't been there like it was last year, uh, but Obi's definitely given the second unit a lift. I think the big thing around the Knicks, depending on what they do this year, CP, is going to be, okay, this has been a nice group, 41 wins last year. We'll see what they can do this year, but is it time to trade for a star? How do you feel about that? Is it time for the Knicks to make a move and add a, a bigger name or a guy? I don't know who that is exactly, whether it's Cat, whether it's Damian Lillard, yeah. What do you think about those options? And do you think it's time for the Knicks to look that way? Uh, not yet. I think they need to stay patient. I, I think one of the most important things is going to be the the overall development of our young players. And that's RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, who's starting to come on strong. Obi Toppin, who we said is starting to come on strong. Let's see what Quentin Grimes can give us if he can you know, get some rotational minutes there, help us on the defensive end and our three-point shooting. We have to ultimately... Our, our younger players are going to be our ticket either towards building a, a winner or getting us those assets that we need can, that can ultimately take us over the hump. Right now, we're, we're still in the position where if we wanted to go get that superstar player, we're going to have to part with the whole house, all of our young assets, all of our draft capital. And to me, it doesn't put us in any closer to being a championship contender. What we want to see is some of these guys being able to elevate this team where you don't need to part with so many to go get a superstar down the road. Now, I think the Dame, I think the Dame, you know, window has passed. Cat, I'm, I don't feel like there, there's a fifth here unless you're going to move Randall. You know, we'll see what happens with Levine. You know, Chicago's playing very well. I, I, I would have to think that he, that he stays there. But ideally, I'm looking down the road at a guy like a, a Spider Mitchell. You know, guys like that, a Booker maybe down the road, you know, one of those second generation stars or or that next window of superstars to come in. But for now, I think the Knicks just have to continue. They have a solid foundation, continue building on that and and, uh, make sure that their young players are developing as well. So I'm with you on that. I'm with you on the they should stay patient, stay the course. There's no need to rush this. The the window for Dame, I agree, is out of there. Just Mm -hmm. just stay patient with that's what the Knicks should do. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if they do that. Two more questions before we get you out of here, yeah. CP. Tonight, Hornets. We saw what happened with the Knicks the other night. They fall behind by 24. Slow starts have, have been a problem for them. You talked about the starting five. What are the keys to them bouncing back down into Queen City, getting yeah. a win against the Hornets tonight? Again, number one, it's their energy. 
And be, because it just wasn't there against this Milwaukee Bucks team, you you cannot keep relying on your second unit to bring you back in game. So I'm expecting the starting unit to really turn things around from the jump, from the opening tip, come out with a spark, come out with energy, make sure that their rotations, their three-point rotations are crisp because you know guys like a Terry Rozier, you know Gordon Hayward, you know those are gunners, and, they, and they're going to be waiting to unload if, if the Knicks are slowing their rotations. Miles Br- Bridges also playing well out there, so Julius Randle is going to be tested uh, if he's got a matchup with Bridges. So it's it's got to start on the defensive end. Offensively, they've got to move the ball, move themselves, do not let the ball stick too much, and then you know hang in there in the game. We know our second unit is probably the best in the league, if we keep the, that lead, you know, close or, or um, take the lead, we can rely on our second unit to, to help extend that or keep it, keep us in the game. So it, it to me, it starts on the, on the, on the starting unit on, on both ends of the floor, bringing more energy. No doubt about it. No doubt about that. Got to bring more energy. Bringing energy has been the Nick fans. That's for sure. CP, they brought the energy. Yeah. So I got to ask you this because there's a lot of debate throughout the city. Mm-hmm. One, whose town is it? You know, you hear a lot of whether it's a Knicks town, yeah. whether it's a Nets town. And we're both from Brooklyn, so I think we know yeah. what the answer is and the energy is around that. But are the Knicks back? Do you feel, you know, you talked about the 17-win year when you guys started. Yeah. You got the pulse of these fans, the Knicks fans TV. And shout out to the fans because they've been rocking with you in the chats and the comments. I see them. They, they're they coming with you. I love that. It's beautiful. Yeah. But are the Knicks back in terms of capturing the energy of the city around basketball? Oh, no question. No question. Uh, look, the diehards have never left. Now you get, you know, the whole bing bong craze, all the casuals, all the youngsters are coming around now. So that that element is there. And that's fine. But, you know, look at the back pages. The, you look at the back pages. There's nights where the Knicks don't even play and the Nets are played and the Knicks are still the story on the back page. There's nights when both teams are playing and the Knicks get the whole back page. The Nets get like that little like corner angle, you know, little little sliver there in the back page. So it, it's always going to be a Knicks town. I feel like, again, you know, there is a big buzz around this team, especially coming into this season based on what we did last year. But with those expectations, we tend to live in the micro where we're overanalyzing every game to determine what the ultimate future and the outlook is for this team. And I think that's a bit dangerous. You know, we, we have to kind of pull back a little bit, take a look at things in the micro before we, you know, just, you know, cast them off and say, ah, oh, well, then they're, they're not going to make it. it. It's still a very early season, but there's no doubt uh, this is a Knicks town and the fan base is, is still uh, rallying around this team. I agree with you, man. Early season. I'm excited to see what the team can do and can grow. Hopefully the fans not going too crazy after the seven and five start. We'll see what they can do tonight. That is CP, the franchise. Please follow him on Twitter. Follow Knicks TV. Support them. Support independent content creators, journalists like ourselves. CP, I really appreciate your time, man. I'd love to have you back on throughout the season. Some more to talk. And uh, just keep doing what you do, brother. I really love it. Anytime, man. Thanks for having me on, Dexter. Have a good weekend.